I want to show you a really cool thing that Illustrator has that we can use um, in lots of different ways. We're going to actually use it by importing some objects into Rhino and then we'll sort of have these objects and their characteristics uh, available to us as we're working in Rhino. So the, the thing that I really want to focus on, just this one quick trick, is in the swatches. When you open up an Illustrator file, you'll have several options as to the kinds of tools that you want. So depending on what you're working on, you'll want to pick painting tools or layout tools. We're just going to pick the Essentials Classic, and it will give you a default set of tools that go with that kind of um, workflow. So w you'll see this little grid with gray colors in it, and that's your swatches. If we click into the swatches, the thing that I really like in swatches is these little libraries in the lower corner. If you have the um, subscription to Creative Cloud, you should also get these swatch libraries. And when we open them up, we're going to see a wide range of color sets. And the nice thing about these is these are color sets that are really beautifully tuned to each other. So if you're making a drawing and you're kind of wondering about what colors might work well, or you're looking for a set of colors that are harmonious, we definitely look into these colors. The ones I like a lot are the art history set. I think that they're really beautiful and they will, of course, sort of have something in common with art history and architecture history in terms of the, the kind of quality of the colors from an era. So if we pick the ancient set and I open this up, you'll see that I've got these really beautifully matched kind of color set. So I like the ancient set. I'm going to go ahead and drag that one up here. So now I have that suite ready. I'm going to look at a couple of others. I want from art history, I want to look at the Baroque. And I think these are really gorgeous combinations of colors too. So I'm going to throw a Baroque set in there. And um, this is also a really nice Baroque set. I've got everything from a kind of rusty red to this really gorgeous tan brown color to these golden colors. So I'll take that one as well. Let's see which other ones we like. Oh, ooh, Impressionism. That'll probably be a little pastel -y for me. Yeah, you might like it. It's a little, I don't love it as much. Middle Ages. Um, those are pretty interesting. This is a nice set. I like this set a lot. Pop art, this should be fun. Big bright colors, not for what we're going to do here. Ooh, prehistoric. Interesting. Some luscious kind of pinky colors and reds and grays. Renaissance. Ooh, interesting. I like that one. Let's just take that. Okay, so now you can see in my swatches that are ready for me to use in my file, I've got lots of sets of colors. And so uh, the nice thing about these are already kind of pre-tuned and tested. So now all I'm going to do is use these swatches to color some really simple objects. And then I'm going to export those objects into a file type that Rhino will appreciate and we can import that into Rhino. Okay, so what I did was just draw a simple square. And then I duplicated that square several times. I looked at my largest palette had seven squares, so I just made it seven. And just so that you know how to duplicate objects, if we use the window to surround the objects and then we click on them, this is a little bit the opposite of Rhino. With Rhino, we need to hit our Alt first. Here we have to click first and then hit Alt. But if we drag with Shift, we are going to duplicate those objects. Now to change the colors, I've also uh, made the object without an outline. This shows the fill color and this shows the outline. So if I wanted to have no outline, I would just pick that um, empty, empty indication. So to change the colors, it's really easy. I'm just going to click on that object and click on the swatch. Click on the object, click on the swatch. And then I'm going to throw the last one away. So the last step is going to be my export. So I have already saved my file. I want to keep this file. And so when you save, the, the native file type is an AI file, Adobe Illustrator. But I'm going to want to save it into something that Rhino will appreciate. So I need to use export, export as. And you'll see I have a lot of file types here. And you'll see this AutoCAD interchange, DXF. That's what we want. And I'm going to export that. So that's all set. So we're done on the Illustrator side. So now we want to start by importing our colors into Rhino. So when I open the Rhino interface, instead of going to an existing model, I'm going to go to Open Other. And you'll see that if I migrate to the area where I saved that file, Color Swatches DXF is available to me. So I'm going to go ahead and open that, the defaults, and look at that. All of those great colors came into Rhino for me. All right, so the last step is to turn these swatches, which come in as hatches, and we're going to actually turn them into 
into materials. So if we want to adopt materials, we will go to this materials tube. You can see that it looks like a little tube of paint. But if we want to create material, such as we would do from these color sets, we would simply, as we usually do, click the plus, click a paint swatch, and it's going to give us several options. So we can click on the color here, and we could pick from the crayons, or we could use the eyedropper to go and click on that object which has the color that we want. So you can see I've already created the blue, this kind of darker green, and this sort of putty color. Let's just do the full set. All right, so that is basically the suite of material paints that I have, and I can apply those two objects now in the drawing.